Hello and welcome. This is going to be Path of the Empress, Step 17, Part B, I believe, although I'll adjust it for being on there. I've been thinking about this one for a little while. I think I'm going to continue with these videos as being blank so you can more so listen and just let your mind wander. I've been trying to think about how to articulate what I wanted to talk about and then I um, saw something that talked about what's called the still point um, in, I think it said it was Tao or Zen, something like that. And it was talking about when you realize that there's no separation between two things. And what I've been thinking about the last couple of weeks since I did the last video is when you look at the star card, you see a completely naked woman um, taking water from a pond and in one hand and pouring out water onto the ground near the pond with her other hand. And there's two things that come to mind is one, whenever you look at a tarot card, look at the figure in the card if there is one and look to see if there are if there's anything blocking any of their chakras, including um, clothing or their other body parts or or a coin or a wand or anything like that because that generally shows you either an emphasis on that chakra or area or a blockage in that area like the four of pentacles the you know the character is specifically holding up a pentacle right over their uh heart chakra and solar plexus chakra you know it's, it definitely blocks it and they've got pentacle on top of their head which isn't blocking the crown chakra but it's right up there in it it's it's you know putting a weight on that and then you know there there's a lot of their body that is blocked by things but in the star card it's actually one of the few cards where you see a completely naked woman and she's got she's not blocking any part of her she's like completely open you can see everything and the other thing that comes to mind is actually is something that I've played around with a fair amount, which is, um, it's like, uh, it's, well, it's hydrokinesis, which is like, there's different kinds of telekinesis. And I mean, I have yet to validate, at least in my own personal experience, um, the ability to do such things, but I do believe they exist. And I do, you know, at, at least I believe they exist because I very much would love to be able to do them. And I, my youngest son actually wanted to learn about it the other day, so I was explaining to him the principles that other people talk about in how to do telekinesis, um, and we were doing hydrokinesis as a start. Now, um, the thing is, though, that what most people talk about who say that they can do it and will do videos and it, it looks like they're doing it I don't know I mean there's plenty of ways to you know use special effects to make it look like it but the principle of it sounds about right is that you have to get to a point where you believe that there is no separation between you and the thing that you want to move um, and that's that you know it's not just with water like if it's water you have to feel like you are the water and the water is you if you want to turn a light switch on or off, you have to believe that you and the light switch are the same, you know, or even <clears throat> bypass the light switch and believe that you are connected to the electricity. And, you know, if it's a, a red ball on the ground, you have to believe that you and the red ball are connected. And another way that I've heard about it is believing, you know, the, simply that you like you can extend your electromagnetic electricity that's uh, that's around your body i mean even modern day science has proven that that is true and that we are all connected to all things by this electricity much in the same way that like effectively all trees are connected and all uh mushrooms are connected underground by a very big you know root system and things like that and so you envision that like say your hand is simply extended in that energy and is reaching out to the light switch or reaching into the water or you know, putting out the candle flame like whatever it is that you want to do now both of them are relevant for this star card but i think the most relevant one is that still point thing i was saying like the still point is when you recognize that there's no separation between you and something else or you and anything else that like you are a part of all things and all things are a part of you now, when it comes to, I want to say when it comes to your twin flame journey, but in general, when it comes to you and, and bettering you and you and your spiritual journey all by itself, 
it is important to get to a point, and you will naturally either way. I mean, you can fight it all you want, and you're just going to realize at some point that the more that you feel like something or someone is missing from you, um, that the you know the more you hold that out of place. But I mean, for for the purposes of this, I want you to start getting into practicing feeling like you are not separate from the things that you want. And this is something that I I already have been I've already. I hesitate to say I've already learned because it's not something that it's one of those things you're always continually learning it and and because of how we're conditioned in society to feel like we are separate from so many things you'll probably find yourself kind of going through uh, spiral cycles of knowing it and forgetting it and knowing it and forgetting it and then when you get to a point where you always remember it you still might have some waffles in there that you learn some little kinks that you untangle along the way but you know, a good point of place to start practicing, um, which is going to be one of the easiest and the hardest things to do is to start practicing this with your twin. And, you know, so if you start getting to the place to where you recognize, because a lot, a lot of people know that like the twin flame story, you know, at least for some, they believe that twin flames are the same being split in half, which goes back to one of the uh, oldest Greek myths that Zeus, you know, took, took human souls and split them in half and then connected them by an invisible red string and that they were meant to spend their, their lifetimes searching for each other. Um, that, that, at that point was called soulmates, but we, you know, it's been interpreted that that is actually twin flames and that soulmates are, are a separate thing. There, now, there's many different beliefs about what twin flames are, but that that is just one of them there. And if you go with that, you know, you, even if you don't believe that you are the same soul, if you believe that you are connected enough to be twin flames, because that's a pretty strong connection, then it's important to get to that place where you no longer feel separate from your twin. Because if, if it, you know, in any of the times when you feel like you are missing from your twin, like, like that you miss them, if they're not with you physically, if they're a city away or state away or a country away, or even just they're, you know, on the other end of a phone, they could be, you know, two blocks away, but you're not standing right there with them, then you are feeling separate from them. And actually, even when you're in union, if you like when they're away from you, say they go on a trip, or they go to see their family, or they go see friends or something like that, if in your mind, even subconsciously, you're interpreting that when they are not right in front of you, that you are separate from them, that can actually create a lot of relationship problems. And you can use this even if you're in a different relationship, either with the karmic, good or bad karmic, or a soulmate. Um, and, you know, because a lot of people have challenges with separation anxiety because of fear of abandonment and things like that. And that mostly stems from, you know, society conditioning us to believe that when we are not like, you know, standing right next to somebody that we love and holding their hand and touching them and doing affectionate things that we're separate from them. Well, we're not. We're never separate from them. And especially when you have a twin flame, you're never separate from them. And that's where it comes down to learning about, you know, reflection, which is another aspect of the star card. I mean, whenever you have water, you have reflection and especially reflection of energy and emotions. And a lot of, I've noticed, well, I've noticed two things that I've noticed that there are a lot of folks, I think that really like the twin flame journey idea you know, kind of in a way that there's a lot of people that kind of romanticize being a shaman or or a spiritual worker and like from the outside it seems like a lot of magic and popularity and and good stuff like that when really I mean it's a pretty daunting journey and there's a lot of hardship to go through it to get to that point and most people who have been through it I mean for one thing they didn't choose it at first and for those that even even those that did choose it, um, well, I should say they didn't choose it consciously. They probably chose it when they came into this lifetime, but they didn't choose it consciously in this lifetime. And then for those who did and actually went through it, most of them will tell you if you if you're one of the people that has a choice, don't choose it. Like go live your life and and don't worry about the rest of the stuff. You know you should be happy to be normal. <laughs> and it's very similar with twin flame journeys. A lot of people kind of romanticize them into being like, oh, that's just so romantic to have a twin flame and this and that. And yeah, it is, but it's also, it's not, 
it's not a journey for the meek, you know. It's a journey where you literally will be, you will, in some form or another, even if you're in a relationship with them, you will not get a full connection and union with them until you stop seeking union with them and you seek union with yourself. You're with both your 3D self and your 5D self. When you get to that still point where you and your 5D self are you know, most of the time in union and you are neither bothered about, concerned by, pursuing or running from your connection with your twin. Like, you, you know, you know whether you've been in separation for a few days or a few years or many years that you are connected with them and that the rest really doesn't matter. <clears throat> it's only when you truly get to that point to where you're enjoying and living your life and you're not dancing back and forth between different karmic relationships or soulmate relationships. You might even be in one, but when you're not constantly basing your own self-worth or value on whether or not you're with someone, when you don't feel lonely when you're alone, when you, you, know, you don't feel alone when you're alone, like you enjoy your solitude as much as your social time, when you have uh, healthy friendships and things like that, especially as a twin, like when you're connected with your soul tribe and you're growing and loving and learning and like you don't try to put yourself on a pedestal as this like perfect human being who doesn't need anybody and uh, you're not worried about talking about your twin or not talking about your twin or hiding like you're you're genuinely authentic you're like audaciously authentic because you are not worried about being rejected by anyone because you know it really does not matter and you recognize that all people and are reflections like especially your twin now what I was saying is that I've noticed that for a lot of twins in especially when you're it's it's difficult to accept in the beginning that you really truly are always reflecting your twin so like if they're choosing karmics and third party relationships so are you yours might be a family member or work or an addiction or you know or even if you are choosing another person you might be like well they're doing that that first and da 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 da, da and things like that well that's still reflecting and if you are unable to allow yourself to be equally accountable both for the good stuff and the not so good stuff then you're holding union out of place the other thing is if you're having trouble with that you might actually you might be facing more issues with codependence and lack of self-worth in in wanting to choose a new relationship than necessarily having a twin flame relationship only you could know that i'm not the judge and jury about who's really a twin and who's not and and who's you know, just got unhealthy attachment traumas and things like that. Because I encourage you, no matter what side you are on, to work on looking into and healing attachment traumas and getting to that still point. Because either way is going to be good for you, whether you're a twin flame or not. And the, 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 here's the funny thing. The higher likelihood is, if you're choosing to see and own the reflection, and you're choosing to work on feeling that still point to where there's no separation between you and your twin, no matter what's going on in the 3D, then you are much more likely to be a twin flame. Because it's much more difficult for someone who is not actually a twin flame to genuinely choose that and choose it because you want to and because you know it's healthy for you rather than to try to get union to come in. Like, as long as you're doing things on the basis of trying to get union or allow union in or things like that which you're going to do a lot don't don't beat yourself up on it but for the longer amount of time you do that the more you hold union out of place because you're only doing these healing things hoping that union will come back again your twin will come back again you'll get that apology or connection or or the 